<laughs> yep, title cards. That'll definitely be what brings it all together. No! What is it going to take to make you see the point? Hey, you didn't even play the intro. Wait, what are you talking about? I'm under the impression that you want to become a great reviewer. Well, yeah, basically. Well, why don't you let me show you exactly how your show was being received? <laughs> What should I watch? Hmm. Maybe something from the forums. What's this? Those are guys that review things on the internet. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, seems pretty neat, but he doesn't actually review anything. Guess I'll watch something else. See? I told you, it was fun at first, all this stuff about intros and sets and title cards, but why are you stalling? They just aren't watching your show. The jokes, the gags, it was funny at first, but this is a community of reviewers. Oh, so what you're saying is we don't need title cards. You need to review something. Would it help if I change myself into a pony? <laughs> All right, we'll do it your way. It's called the Buttercream Gang. Well, let's give people the standard rundown. Yes! The Buttercream Gang follows a group of boys who are committed to volunteering around the community and helping those in need. The gang consists of four boys. Pete, Scott, Lanny, and Eldon Flowers. Flowers? Really? It's bad enough his name is Eldon. Our film opens with our heroes hiding around their treehouse as their friend Pete approaches. Hey, where are you guys? Surprise! Dear Lord! We learn that Pete is leaving for Chicago to help out his aunt, who apparently has amazing culinary skills. Even if she does make spaghetti with ketchup, huh? <laughs> but before that, he places Scott... In charge of the buttercreamers. Scott, to be president of the buttercreamers. We then see our dear friend Pete leaving for Chicago, who apparently slaps people as a greeting. Bye! Ow! Time passes in Elk Ridge as Scott and Pete exchange letters. How's Chicago? You've only been gone a month, but it feels like a year. I really missed the fun we had together. Hey, Aunt Maria. Well, hey, Pete. How'd you do in school today? Fantastic. Here's my exam. We got an A on the old history report. Hey, Pete, that's great. You know, if your parents were alive, I think they'd be so proud of you. If your parents were alive, they'd be so proud of you. Be a little bit more insensitive, lady. I've got a lot to tell you, both some good news and some bad. I got straight A's on my report card. But I won't be able to come home for Christmas. My Aunt Marie says it costs too much. Hey, you have a letter from Scott. I'll read it later, all right? I met some neighbor kids. We mostly just hang out at the video arcade. I'm learning a lot about Chicago, even though it's not like the fun we had, but they're okay. But we learned that Pete's in a whole new kind of gang, the kind that blatantly stereotypes Latino Americans as evil. But Pete's in for a shocker. Down, huh? <laughs> You've been busted, man. Hang loose. Help me to the street with this. Where are we going? You're catching the bus home. Uh, 
like you're here just fine. I'm sorry, but I've talked to your grandfather, and he thinks that the best thing for you would be to go back to Elk Ridge. Well, that didn't take very long. I take real big offense to this vilification of Latino Americans. We'll get more into that later. It's here we learn the history of the Buttercream Gang. Because God knows we needed some kind of explanation. Buttercream business. <laughs> Did I ever tell you boys that my great-grandfather was one of the first Buttercreamers? Yes, a thousand. Yeah, it was during the early days of the town. After a raid, it killed several of the men. The minister asked some of the teenage boys, including my great-grandfather, to help the widows by churning their butter. It was hard work, you know. But explanations will have to wait when we find out that Pete's back in town. He invites the guys all to get some celebratory treats, despite the fact that he's eating peanut butter, one of the world's most filling substances. And in the middle of all this treat business, why don't we go ahead and vilify Latino Americans some more? Why, Pete Turner. That's it. I'd hardly recognize you. It's good to see you. <laughs> Listen, I'm thinking about changing my name to Pete Valdez. You know, that's my mom's name. Well, Pete Valdez. Lanny and Eldon are glad that Pete's back in town. But Scott still has his doubts. There's something wrong with Pete. Why? Just because he shows up looking different? I think he's okay. I think he's more than okay. Pete's never bought treats before. I think it's great. Listen, Scott. Thanks for not saying anything back there. About what? About me stealing the stuff from Grass. And he's right. As our only song of the movie starts up, we experience firsthand the evil transformation of Pete, as well as the contrasting good deeds of the Buttercream Gang. Shadows of a brighter day. Time stood still and it never seemed that our worlds could grow apart. It was all for one and one for all, straight from the heart. Warm summer rains that we hoped would never end Wash away troubles and sorrow And starry nights when each wish came true Can't you go. send all those gotta, yesterdays to tomorrow? Uh, okay, Won't you please tell me where to find me? And that life with a storybook end. Can't you please tell me where to Kicking kids off the seesaw? Really? What's next? Stealing kids' lunches? And why doesn't anyone say anything to the police? Wait, wait, wait. A spin move? Did he just shoplift with a spin move? Show me that again. That was awesome. And definitely one of our nominees for coolest moment of the movie. Coolest moment of the movie. Nominee number one. Spin move. It's not all good times and spin moves, though, as we learn that Scott owes the nerdy girl a favor. I came to collect on that favor you owe me. You owe Margaret a favor? That's worse than dog breath. Ah, dog breath. Remember when you were a kid and the worst thing that could happen to you was dog breath? Very funny. Yeah, that was good times. The favor is for you to take me to the dance. Tonight. Pick me up at 7 and don't be late. But, hey, pick her up at 7 and don't be late. <laughs> so Scott has to take the nerdy Margaret to the dance. But not before she gets captured by Pete's gang and their circle of peddling metal death. Doesn't she, like, step out or, you know, like, walk away? 
But Scott rescues her just in time and let Pete know that he's out of the Buttercream gang. Hey Pete, Buttercreamers had a meeting. If you don't start carrying your share of work, you're out. Well, hey, I'll make it unanimous there. I'm out, okay? And Pete puts up such a fight. Don't you want to talk about it? Smarten up. Look around, this is my gang here. I don't want anything to do with your stupid club. I'm teaching these guys that they can have anything they want just by taking it. So you, your geek girlfriend over there, and everybody else better just stay out of my way. But we can't worry about that. We've got a dance to go to. We also get that classic geek to beauty transformation, complete with the need to never have to wear glasses again ever in the movie. Ah, uh, what could ruin this most perfect evening? That's a run in the nylons. What's the matter with you? Look, Scott, I told you I get even, I always do. So let me tell you something, you and your two little buddies over there better watch out, you understand? No, you watch out! I'm warning you! You better stop what you're doing! Who's gonna stop me, huh? You and the two stooges over there? I don't think so. We have to. Oh, big talk's getting us really scared, Scott. Yeah, well, this time it's not talk. What, is that a threat? Are you threatening me? No, it's a promise. All right, man. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock, Swanson's Field. You better be there. We will. Let's get out of here. You just start saying your prayer. Yeah, you'll be toast when we get done with you. Yeah, burnt toast. Burnt toast? You'll be burnt toast? <laughs> Coolest moment of the movie. Nominee number two. Burnt toast. But before our buttercream rumble, the boys need to go to church. And while they're there, the boys feel the eyes of God on them and begin to have their doubts. I shouldn't have come to church today. Coach has to know about the fight. He was looking right at me. Nah, I heard him practice the last week. It doesn't matter. My mom told me God knows everything in advance. So what do we do now? They meet up in a field and tell Pete that he needs to meet Scott somewhere else. What do you want? Scott wants to meet you alone. Where? Old truck in the olive grove. There better not be no double cross. Pete in his customary way slaps Scott hello. We're here to fight. But Scott has some challenging words for Pete. I think there's a better way. I ain't afraid of nothing. All right. I challenge you to spend the day with me tomorrow. Just like last summer. I think you've got the guts. Well, that's anticlimactic. We now get to see the boys enjoying each other's company once more. Much as they once did. Next. So Scott tells Pete that he's made him forget all about his worries. And Pete announces his stand on things. Oh boy, am I beat. Well, you've done it again. What'd that do now? Maybe relax and forget all my worries. What worries? A championship game tomorrow. I completely forgot about it. In my neck of the woods, there are only two types of people. Your friends and your enemies. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. But enough of that. We've got a baseball game to go to. However, Pete is there, too. And in the end, ends up costing Scott the game. Hey buddy, lots of pressure. Don't freeze up now. Don't want you to blow the championship for the whole team. What are you doing? What? You didn't hurt me. You hurt the whole team. Well, it's like I said, Scott. There are two kinds of people in this world, right? Your friends and your enemies. Cut the way, Pete. I'm sorry, Scott. I wish there was something I could do. You can send him back to Chicago where he belongs. Coolest moment of the movie. Nominee number three. Yelling at old men. However, life goes on in Elkbridge, and Scott is on his way to the old settler's right. picnic. But he has a run-in with Pete. Hi. Hi. How you doing, man? Hey, so I wanted to talk to you about the game yesterday. I was just being... Well, maybe Pete's had a change of heart, and he wants to make up. 
hell no. I just want to say, don't you ever talk to me that way again. Do you understand? Look at me. Don't ever talk to me that way again, and don't you ever, ever, ever threaten me. No, again. no, no. Take him in there. Oh. Well, you did the right thing, son. So Scott goes home to tell his parents what happened. And they tell him yeah, that they're proud of him, that he was beat senseless, it and advise Scott to love Pete, no matter what he does. I mean, shouldn't doing what's right change something? Personally, to me, it sounds awfully difficult to accept someone for who they are if all they do is be a pain in the ass at every turn. We get yet again the only song in the movie, as Scott and the whole town demonstrate how they accept Pete for who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Send all those yesterdays to tomorrow. Won't you? I personally think it's time to make some new friends. Agreed. We learn though that there's trouble at Pete's house, and the buttercream gang swings into action. Elvin, could you see me sending him for help? That's a good point. I promised him a giant milkshake if you just stayed there. Maybe we should call the police. Finally. Someone suggested involving the police. Uh, we better go check it out first. Listen, Gramps, I ain't got it all day. I want those gold coins now. Now hey, you give them to me right now, or I'm gonna hurt this kid real bad. You better listen to him, Gramps. I, I told you I don't have them here. They're down at the bank in the safety deposit box. Oh, come on, Grandpa. I saw him here the other day. Don't worry about it. The insurance will pay for it. Don't let him hurt me. Pete in trouble? Yeah. Yeah, he is. I got a plan, but we've got to work fast. Dog pile! You trying to pull, kid? Why don't you mind your own business? What do you mean? We just saved you. Saved me? What could you save me from? I set the whole thing up to get money to go back to Chicago. I don't believe that. Why? You ruined everything. Just leave me alone. Money, old man. What? Open it up, come on. It's all right, Pete. If you need some money, I'll give you some. Is Pete robbing the store without a weapon? Don't you get it, old man? You're being robbed here. Well, I know that's what you're trying to do. But if I give you the money, then you're not robbing me. Now, here's uh, $274. Is that enough? What? Well, let's see how this all plays out. Scott, this whole town is crazy. What's the matter with you people? Don't you got any brains in your head? You don't give somebody the money who's trying to rob you and say, well, now you're not robbing me. Well, then what do we do? You're supposed to try and stop me. That's why you needed the money. I don't want your lousy money. Are you reminding me how good I used to be? I want you to try and stop me. That's it. I'm going to tear apart this whole store until you do stop me. You understand? I'm going to tear it apart. Because I want to. Stop it, Pete. You're fighting with Mr. Graff. It's me. You better back off, Scott. I'm going to crack you upside the head. You got that? You're not going to touch me. You're right. I'm not. I just want to know what you really want. I've done everything I know how to show you that I accept you for who you are. You're my friend no matter what you do. You're right about me being selfish. I've tried to show you that. I'm confused, Pete. What do you really want? I want you to hate me. 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 I want you to. Oh my god. Yeah, that is pretty terrible. You want me to hate you? Why? Because I hate myself. Peach, you're my friend. I can't hate you. Can't you accept that? No.
Oh, now the police show up. Let's see, we've had assault, theft, arson, attempted arson, shoplifting, destruction of personal property, public menacing, criminal threatening, defacing government property, It's about Pete. I just got a letter from his aunt today. I just want you to know, son, it doesn't always turn out this way. Well, at least it looks like Pete's dead. That's good. I wouldn't be so sure. Today at 2 o'clock, the mayor of Chicago honored, for the first time in the city's history, a member of a gang. That gang member was Pete Turner. Mr. Turner's gang is most unusual. Mr. Turner tells his gang, if you'll accept yourself for who you are and truly love others, a lot of good will happen. So that's the Buttercream Gang. How is it? Eh. It's certainly not the worst movie ever. It does make a lot of good points, and besides the obvious Pepsi references, Get the right one, baby! Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and some of the clothes, it looks pretty timeless. Those things really date the movie, though. The main star, of course, is Pete. It's arguable that he's just mixed up inside, but when he returns all of Scott's papers with his bike, that's pure evil. So check it out. I mean, if you got younger kids, or if you just want to laugh, or you want to just check out Pete's awesomeness. And now it's time for our nominees for the coolest moment of the movie. And the nominees are... Nominee number one, Spin Move. Nominee number two, Burnt Toast. Nominee number three, Yelling at Old Men. And the winner is... Yeah, I can agree with that. It was pretty super ridiculous. See? Look at that. We made it through a whole review. Look, I even had time to make a title card. Show me that beautiful JPEG. <sniffs> well, isn't that nice? Well, I'm gonna go to the bathroom since this is pretty much wrapped up. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yes, I can feel the power growing within me. Once we've done enough reviews, I will have enough strength to take over this body and reign supreme over all reviewerdom. Yes, soon. <laughs>